Hello there, this is Parenting 2.0. This is the progression from Parenting 101. When your child comes into this earth, they are the culmination of the perspective and the consciousness that is accrued from both you and your partner. This is one way that the universe facilitates its own expansion. The purpose of children is not just the expansion of the universal consciousness, it is also to help expand your consciousness, and this is how it's done. We're prevented from expanding when we are stuck in our own childhood, and adults are stuck emotionally in their childhood. All adults still have an inner child, or multiple inner children. If we have not reparented our inner child yet, we are at the mercy of our childhood needs and impulses. Needs that didn't get met, and impulses which occur because of those unmet needs. Our emotional selves never grow up. Our emotional selves are always children. So the leaders of our world are essentially angry, fearful five-year-olds with nuclear weapons. A child gives us the opportunity to externally parent our internal child. Our children will reflect us specifically so that we can heal ourselves. But instead of heal, let's say integrate ourselves. And here we have our first tip. Parent the child within, externally, through your child. Love becomes distorted if we do not address our own pain. We need to be willing to address our own childhood wounds. We need to be willing to integrate our emotional body in order to ask ourselves the question, what did I need from my parents that I did not get? It's easy then to see the mistakes that you're making with your own child. It's easy then to see how to parent instead. If you parent in the same way that your parents parented you, which is the way you'll parent unless you become more conscious, there is no progression of consciousness. It is a state of endedness. The number one most important thing we can do for our children is to integrate our own emotional childhood pain. If not, we will pass this wound to our children. Think of this like passing a baton. We pass the baton from generation to generation to generation until the person who stops that cycle of wound transfer. If you are not brave enough to sink into your pain and move through it and become conscious of it, you will not see how much trauma was caused by your parents shaming you, and so you will shame your child. You will default to raising your child the exact same way your parents raised you. You have passed on the wound, you have passed the baton. Now, I for one would rather say the buck stops here and be the one to deal with it, all of that intergenerational wounding, than to hope that my child figures out how to do it. We project our wounds onto our children, making it about what's wrong with the child and making it about what the child needs to fix. Because we don't recognize this projection, which is really the reflection of our own childhood pain, we try to fiddle with effects. What I mean is, you try to fix your kid. You try to make them different. But by doing this, you're really walking upstream and not going to accomplish anything. Because it's the same as trying to change the reflection that's in the mirror by trying to clean the mirror as much as you can. It doesn't address the causation of the issue, which is your own pain. It is you. I demonstrate a process to use in order to do this in my YouTube video titled Healing the Emotional Body. If I had my way, all parents would incorporate this process into their daily routine. You shift, and your child will shift. This is the real reason why I don't work with children. If I have a problem with a child, I work with their parent. Now, I realize that some of you will be immediately defensive when I say that, because you would rather I say that you're a wonderful parent no matter what. But if you're the kind of person who sees the child as the problem, stop for a minute and ask yourself, what kind of environment is it that this child, from their perspective, is growing up in? What is this child growing up with in terms of self-concept, if they're constantly being fed with the idea that they're the problem and that something is wrong with them? 
That's what we do when we externalize our internal wounds on our children instead of dealing with them at the source of the problem, which is really within ourselves. I will say this one last time. If you have an issue with your child, it's not about your child. It's about an unhealed aspect within yourself. If you shift, your child will shift. No exception to this rule. When your own child is upset, it's easy to ask yourself, once you become conscious of this external wounding, what did I want in this same scenario from my parents? I'm going to give you a hint, though. As a child, what we wanted from our parents was not for them to whisk us out of our pain. It was not for them to rescue us. It was not for them to fix us or make things better. What we wanted was unconditional attention, unconditional love. Unconditional meaning that our parent is going to be present with us regardless of whether we feel good or we feel bad. That's what you really want as a child. So in order to be fully present with our children, we have to unconditionally be there for them in the emotion that's happening currently. This means we don't immediately rescue our child from feeling angry or feeling sad or feeling pain. What we do is we enable them to understand that they are capable of feeling, fully feeling, those emotions, and that we will be with them while they fully feel those feelings. We don't want to immediately whisk them out of their emotions because that fills our child with the idea that negative emotions are bad and are to be avoided. This compounds our internal fracturing. It makes sure that this is a child that is not going to be emotionally intelligent, it's going to be a child that suppresses their emotions and that dissociates from themselves. And that is the same as abandoning themselves. This brings us to the next tip, which is, as far as I'm concerned, the pillar upon which good parenting stands. And it goes like this. Validate emotions. One of the worst things you can do to your child is invalidate their emotions. This is a super common behavior amongst parents. A lot of it stems from the rather selfish fact that we cannot stand to see our children upset. So we try to do everything we can to make them not upset, not because of love and consideration for them, but because of self-preservation. We do it because we don't want to feel upset when we see them upset. Just like we need to be fully present with ourselves no matter how we feel, we need to be present with our children no matter how they feel. Here's a scenario. A child experiences negative emotion because their parent has decided that they can't have something at the store. As a result, the child throws a fit or immediately starts to cry. Mom and dad gets angry and then proceeds to repeat no, no, or start arguing with the way the child feels by saying things like, stop that crying right now, there's no reason to do that. Money does not grow on trees, you know. We already got the popsicles you wanted, etc. The child is being taught that how they feel is wrong. The child is being forced to suppress that feeling. The child is not allowed to experience and move through the feeling, and so the feeling is stuck as an imprint within them, within the child's emotional body, which continues with them into an adulthood. That feeling will now become an imprint, which will mirror out into his adult life as situations that make him feel guilty or situations that make him feel poor. The parent has, in that seemingly small moment, set up the child's future in a negative way. Here's the thing. Every single emotion that a child experiences is valid. It doesn't matter whether you are trying to project your adult understanding on top of a child's experience. Every emotion is valid. If you had just come from source perspective, like a child does, where there is nothing but unconditional love, and where there's nothing but unlimited abundance, it is a painful experience to suddenly be in a conditional world where your abundance seems limited because of your parents' lack of abundance mentality. An extreme reaction is absolutely appropriate. It will never work to impose the adult perspective with all of your years of experience and all of your years of suppressing your own emotion to get a child to see things your way. And that is not the point. The point is not to alter them, the point is to be there with them for their experience unconditionally, no matter if that experience feels good or feels not good to them. In the previous scenario, the thing to do would be to kneel down at their level and express genuine empathy by saying something like, I know, lovey, it's okay to feel upset. I feel the exact same way when I want something that I don't feel like I can have. Then you can encourage the child to express to you verbally how they feel or where they feel the feeling in their body. By doing this, you allow them to have feelings 
and not suppress them. You allow them to move through the feeling. You cause them to know that no matter what, you will be there with them and for them through everything. They are not alone. You are raising an emotionally intelligent child instead of disfiguring their emotional capacity. Notice we did not rush to make the emotion better by giving the child what the child was asking for. We didn't try to rescue them from their emotions, thus causing them to believe the negative emotions are bad or wrong or to be avoided. We didn't immediately buy the child what they wanted and give in. The child did not become a dictator of the household, who everyone is a slave to. Instead, the child was treated as an equal member of the household. Now, if I was in this scenario, this would be a perfect time to teach a child not only to move through their emotion, but also about manifestation. While I was down on one knee, I might explain to them that mommy doesn't have the best abundance mentality, that it's not about the fact that they don't deserve whatever it is that they want. It's that mommy doesn't have a good enough abundance mentality to buy everything, but also that mommy is not the only way for him to get what he wants. Your children are not served by thinking that you're perfect. As parents, we fall into this major ego trap of wanting to be gods to our children because, my hell, it feels really good when someone finally thinks you're significant, the most significant person in their lives. But the reality is we're doing a disservice when we raise them with the idea that mom and dad know everything because guess what? None of us do. So explain to them about your shortcomings. Explain to them how you might not know the answer. Show them the process of going and looking for the answer. Show them the process of learning. One of the best things you can do is to raise them with confidence about the things that they might learn in their adulthood. One of the best things you can do when your kid asks you a question when they're in the why phase and you don't know the answer is to say, you know, I don't know why and I don't know if anyone else knows why, but maybe when you grow up, you'll find out why. This gives the child an idea that there is something to reach towards, that they are going to be of some value to the world itself, that mom and dad are not gods. All emotions should be understood and validated. We are not validating that the child's belief is right. We are validating what they feel. We are mirroring it. Mirroring emotion means the child falls down and is crying, and instead of whisking the pain away, we say, oh, I bet that really felt scary, didn't it? I know I used to feel really scared when I fell down when I was your age. We just mirrored how they felt. By doing this, the child is not fighting against their negative emotion, and as a result, the emotion blows over quickly. The third tip I'm going to give today is don't shame your child. Shaming is emotional abuse, period, the end. You can't even argue with that. A child will only respect and love somebody who respects and loves them. Shaming creates humiliation. Shaming also makes the parent the enemy. And a child cannot learn if they are being shamed. Shaming a child is as good as pouring acid on their self-concept. And children are more than capable of learning from the consequences of their own actions without you rubbing salt into the wound. I'm constantly explaining the value to parents of children being able to make mistakes, especially when they're very young. Now, it is true that you're probably going to run into flack from teachers and from other parents who don't understand this concept. But the reality is we are trying to raise children who are responsible healthy creators. We are not trying to manufacture a tiny being, which will now be a unit of a machine that we call society, that will not be able to think for itself, will not be able to take responsibility, and most of all, whom lives its life to try to avoid conflicts with authority figures. This means that, for example, if your child does not go to sleep on time after being informed of the potential consequence, which is feeling too tired the next day at school, let them find out for themselves. Let them experience the consequence without saying, I told you so. This means they will eventually decide to go to bed on time themselves. Shame is worse than guilt. Guilt is believing that one has done bad, whereas shame is believing that one is bad. Those of us who are conscious of what our own childhood did to us are well aware of just how damaging that belief can be when it is carried on to adulthood. We think a parent can only traumatize their child as a result of abusing or neglecting them, physically abusing or physically neglecting them. This could not be farther from the case. The reality is, by far more damage can be done to your child 
by the emotionally abusive things that we do to them. Things that we, in fact, in this society, consider to be normal parenting behavior. Shaming is one of these forms of societally accepted emotional abuse. Now, myself being the person who has come up and survived multiple childhood abuse forms, I will tell you that by far the most damaging to your adulthood life is emotional abuse. Emotional abuse, shaming included, is more harmful than physical abuse, and it is more harmful than sexual abuse. I find it a tragedy that as a society, we have condemned all forms of abuse, while at the same time upholding the acceptance of the most damaging form of abuse that there is. To me, this is nothing short of tragedy. Now, think about this for a minute. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of damage done when you sexually abuse somebody and when you physically abuse somebody. But the emotional abuse, which often accompanies both other types of abuses, is what lasts with you into your future because it's what forms your self-concept. If you're walking into your future with a corroded sense of self, that spells a life of living hell. These behaviors that we think are normal parenting which we are in fact desensitized to, cause trauma in the child's being and result in a dysfunctional adult who cannot thrive. I love this term, failure to thrive, that they like to use with children of abuse and neglect. But I will tell you, there is a great many people who fail to thrive that are quote-unquote functioning members of society. What does it mean to thrive? I can tell you it means a lot more than just surviving into adulthood. The more you integrate your own childhood, the more you will see just how damaging so-called normal good parenting of our time is, and just how many long-term negative effects have to do with that popularly accepted style of parenting. And lastly, the final tip for this parenting video is to question everything. It's incredible how much we parent on autopilot, adopting the beliefs of people, of society, and most especially of our parents. You will parent exactly like your parents parented you until you become conscious. That means we have to question everything we think childhood should be, every way we think we should be with our children, and every way we think our children should be with us. There should be nothing that is off limits to our questioning. We here watching this video, those of us who really want our children to grow up in a way that facilitates their eternal nature, in a way that enables them to grow and to thrive, not just survive. It's dependent upon us making the choice to become fully conscious. That's what conscious parenting is all about. It's about us being completely aware of ourselves, completely aware of our children, so that we may facilitate progression and expansion in our world. Have a good week.